Our part of the prayer workshop is about listening for God's voice. How does God speak to us? Are our spiritual eyes open and our ears primed to hear God? Well, the Lord wants us to be praying and asking for this. That boy in Little Disciples knew it was the Lord calling Samuel. That little boy had ears to hear and eyes to see. Well, the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives as well. While I have never heard the, the Lord's voice audibly in my ears, there have been many, many times that I am keenly aware of the Holy Spirit quickening my soul. So John and I are going to offer six different ways to listening to listen for God's voice. It's not exhaustive by any means, and you'll have a handout for this. I have a disclaimer, first of all. Prayer is a very difficult discipline for me. It's hard for me to quiet down, to concentrate, to be still. But we want this to be a learning fresh time about listening and praying and communicating with the Lord. Because it's about a relationship, not an activity. It's a communication. It's God to us and us to God. Scripture is the first way to listen for God's voice. It's the key of keys, says Mark Batterson. And as Second Timothy says, all scripture is God-breathed, so it's our prized possession. There's two ways I use scripture. First, I pray scripture back to the Lord using his own words. The Psalms are especially meaningful for me as I pray this way. And secondly, then, I listen through scripture for the Lord's voice to me. I remember a couple of years ago, I had chosen Colossians 4, 2 to live by for that year. It says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. It changed my perspective on prayer because as I prayed, I would be watchful and thankful during the day. So the very things that I had prayed for in the morning, then at night I would rehearse my day and go back and open eyes, being watchful as to where I saw the Lord at work, and then thanked him for that. So that was very helpful for me. Another scripture tool that has been particularly helpful is praying the armor of God from Ephesians 6. I pray that over people as I like place um, pieces of armor on them, the belt of truth. I pray that when I want someone to, when I'm praying so hard for truth to be real in their lives, to show. So I place that belt around their waist as I'm praying for them. Or when I am praying the helmet of salvation and wanting to place that helmet on their head as a protection from the thoughts that they would be thinking and seeing with their eyes. So I pray that helmet of salvation. And my favorite, shield of faith, I learned that the Roman soldiers, um, during the time when Paul would have been writing Ephesians, as they marched through the streets in Roman army formation, they would lock their shields together, and when arrows were coming at them, they would literally put their shields up over their heads like a turtle formation. And so I have and some other friends have started praying what we call turtle formation. So we will text people, um, we call ourselves the turtle tribe, TT, I need prayer for, and they know to put up that shield of faith. So those are just two ways for me that scripture has meant so much to me as I pray. Second way to hear God's voice is through people. I want to share a scripture with you. One of my favorites. It's my life verses. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. 
Well, at the time I was thinking this, it would have been back in 1962. That's a while back, you know. And I didn't know where I was going to go to college. I hadn't even thought much about it. But I had started praying about it, and I'm sure my parents did too. They were wonderful believers. Neither mom nor dad had gone to college. Dad hadn't finished high school. He stopped at the eighth grade because he was a farm boy. That's what they did. But I wanted to go to college, but I didn't know where. Who was I going to ask? None, nobody in the family had. In the summer times at the Evangelical United Brethren Church, where Marilyn and I were members, we always had a missionary by the name of Bill Gillum. He worked in Central America, but in the summer he would take a month off and visit the churches who supported him. Bill was a marvelous communicator. In music, he'd sit at the piano, songs he'd written, he'd sing them with a huge smile, and then he would preach. When it came time to go to college, I said to a friend, where did Bill Gillum go to, go to college? They told me, Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. Hmm, wouldn't you know, God had led me, even though I didn't use those scripture verses at that time, he had led me to this point. So I enrolled at Asbury College, a whole lot of time went by, and it was my sophomore, no, I'd finished the sophomore year and was heading into my junior year, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to fool around. I decided I was going to be a church music major and direct music in a church somewhere. Well, during the summer, which I had to stay there to get, to get my degree, a friend of mine, Bernard Fagan, was crossing the campus. He was the trustee of the college of Asbury College. He stopped me and said, John, I see you're going to be a church music major. I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, I've been praying about this for you. He said, I think... That's too narrow of a major. Right now in 1963 or 4, whatever it was, it's not very lucrative. I don't think you could support a wife and family on that salary. Um, there are very few churches who even have ministers in music. He said, what would you think if you did a music education major? And then you could teach. I said, I don't want to teach. Well, you could teach. And then also be in a church. Okay, I said, I'd pray about it. I did, called Marilyn, called my folks, we all prayed. So I became a music education major. Had to stay another whole year just to get all of that done. But it was the wisest decision God ever sent my way. Another scripture, Psalm 115.1. Once we got to Holland, Marilyn and I at Christ Memorial Church, I know God gave me this verse, Psalm 115, 1, not to us, O Lord, but to your name give glory. If you go through that verse and you're in ministry, any kind of ministry, God gets the glory. You don't get the glory. And I feel like the Lord really told me that day, those verses. One more thing I want to leave you with. During this quarantine time, I had a nudging in my devotions one day as I was telling Marilyn. I had a word come to me. That first day, it was the word trust. Um, the Lord gave it to me, I guess. I not guess, I guess I know. The next day, it was cornerstone. The next day, alien. Well, for every day of the quarantine so far, and this is my, the 29th of March, today's word is faithful. Every day, the Lord has given me a word from my scripture. I follow scripture union called discovery. And there will be something that stands out to me. That's what I think the Lord does. If we give him time, quiet time in the day, just to sit there and read his word, to pray, he will send you something. And for me, it's a word. Lord, use these words to strengthen those who listen. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The third area and way to hear from God and hear his voice and listen for his spirit to be working in your life is through events. Well, I have to back up a little bit. Both John and my good friend Phyllis 
had cautioned me about getting some rest in my life. They sensed that I had no margins. Um, one of them who lives in this house where I live even said I was harried. Now that seems a little extreme to me, but okay. So I had no rest. Well, now come with me. It is August 31st and I am excited to have our last Subway sandwich with John downtown. And I go running out of the car and I am running to the back door of the restaurant. And lo and behold, I didn't notice that the road or the sidewalk dipped down. And um, I went flat on the sidewalk, to be really honest with you. My keys and wallet flying across and uh, there I was flat down. Well, I managed to get up and started walking and realized, oh dear, something is askew here. It's a little difficult for me to walk. The long and short of it all is I had broken my foot and didn't realize it. Walked on it for a week, finally went to the doctor, had surgery, and ended up spending about 10, 12 weeks in a boot. Well, that knocked my whole fall and I realized the Lord was saying to me, I needed rest. Now, I thought I was doing just fine and didn't need to rest, but the Lord knew differently. Listen to what rest means in Hebrew. It means to cause to rest, to make to rest, to let fall, hint, hint, let alone withdraw, settle down, and to be quiet. I think the Lord knew I needed to rest. And in Psalm 23, verse 2, it says, He makes me lie down. Get that? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He doesn't just suggest that you do. He makes you. He made me lie down. And that Hebrew literal translation to that verse would be, he continually causes me to lie down. Well, last fall, to be honest with you, I did not understand it at all, why I had to be laid up for so long. Yes, I, I did not understand it. But in January, all of a sudden, I realized that my lonely place had become a sacred place for me. And I learned to rest. The Lord spoke to me. And now with this quarantine and we're home, I am finding great joy of being here in a restful state. We're on part four. Part four is, how does God speak to me? Or maybe you. For me, music. Oh, that's a surprise, isn't it? Music. Lord does speak to me through music. Some time ago, we sang an anthem called, My Song in the Night. And it has haunted me since then. Songs in the night. I've asked the Lord, often when I'm kneeling by my bed at night, Give me a song to sing during the night when I awaken, and it'll happen. Great is thy faith on us, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Meditate on that. Wow! You get up feeling totally rested. I like to wake up singing like that, and I'll tell Marilyn, you know what song the Lord gave me today? He hideth my soul in the depths of his rock, for shadows the dry, thirsty land, I don't always have the words right to the songs, but he gives them to me, and I rehearse them throughout the day. I like this one recently. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Not a few things, not the big major things, everything to God in prayer. I'm still working on that. 
given a privilege some time ago when we moved here. I met a friend by the name of Priscilla Estelle. And that relationship, because she was in choir, required a bit of a care. She was still on her own at that time, but it wasn't easy for her. So I became her power of attorney and sort of like care elder for her and, and worked with her. A lot of other people helped me do that. Eventually, she ended up in Rest Haven Care Facility on 40th Street. A few years back, she died. But during that time, we would have programs. She would love it when I would sit at the organ in the Rest Haven Chapel and just play for her. We'd sing songs together. Other people would gather around. And it turned into a little bit of a program. Sometime later, when Priscilla had died, I was singing to individuals in their rooms at Rest Haven. Quite a ministry that God allowed me to have. And in that, I met again Becky Rusher. Now, I know Becky through music. She's a marvelous mezzo-soprano singer. She sings with the Holland Legion Band in the summer. She does more than that. She teaches vocal students and other things. She is a Christ follower. I also, during that time, had a letter from a friend from the past, Sam Hoffman. He was a missionary in the RCA for 42 years, where he and Helen served in Chiapas, Mexico. They're retired and have been for some time. He was a member of a quartet called the Singing Dominies. Well, the Singing Dominies got to a point where they not they didn't all want to feel like singing anymore because their voices maybe I don't know all the reasons, but they discontinued singing together as a quartet. We received in December a letter from Sam, and it said, John, do you ever think we could sing together? Because I know you do uh, music at Rest Haven quite often. I'd like to see if we could work it out together. So I called him. He said, let's meet at Christ Memorial Church, which he lives there on 26th Street, kind of close by. So we met, we sang together, and I thought, yeah, we sound pretty good together. Let's, let's do programs. We had done one program, and Becky Rusher happened by. Why? Well, her mom, Franny, Fran, was there, a marvelous, a marvelous individual who loves to sing. She can't see, but she can sing. Becky Rusher, her daughter, loves to sing. And she joined us on one number because she had walked in when Sam and I were doing a chapel service. And she just joined us with harmony. And we, we had a good sounding trio. So from, I don't know, Marilyn, how long has it been? A couple of years now? We've been doing... Uh, two programs a month at Rest Haven Chapel on 40th Street. And we are blessed way beyond the blessings we could give. We can see God using music to encourage the residents as they come in. We have a super time. And you know what? It encourages us the most. God is so faithful. Pray with me. Thank you, Father, for using us in spite of ourselves often but using us and using music to speak to us. May people listening to this presentation stop and think, how is God talking to me? Perhaps music is one of the ways. I pray this for good ears and receptivity. In Jesus' name, amen. A fifth way that we can listen to God's voice is through nudgings and promptings. This one is particularly significant to me. Um, I want to go back and tell a story. In about 1974, John and I, along with our two sons, David and Paul, had a, a Finnish exchange student live with us for a year. What a sweet, sweet girl. We loved her. Her name was Kati Sutala. And um, after she went back, we kept in touch with her for many years. And then all of a sudden, we did not hear from her very much. But let me go back to um, about three decades ago. I was sitting on the floor picking out a birthday card to send to her. And I had this overwhelming sense, this overwhelming nudge, this overwhelming just prompt to call her. So I got on the phone and called her. It was 11 o'clock there in Finland. 
and she it took a while for her to answer the phone and when she did of course it was in Finnish and I said hi Kati this is Marilyn from America and then she was breathless and said and she said why did you call and I went well um I just felt prompted to call you what what makes you ask well, she had been out on the ledge of her apartment in Helsinki, several floors up, and she was going to jump thinking that she could fly. As she said to me, I had to come off the ledge to answer the telephone, and then I'm going back to jump. Well, for one hour, I kept her on the phone and I was praying, praying, praying. I wrote notes to John saying, how do we get in touch with the police in Helsinki to go find her and and rescue her and we were just I was panicked but I was praying that whole time the Lord had nudged me very significantly nudged me back the year before she had come to live with us um, she was a brand new baby Christian John 10 I am the shepherd and the sheep know my voice had been the very verse that the Lord called her to be his child. And I am confident even to this day that that verse still rings true in her life. For about oh, 25 years, we hadn't heard from her. Last fall, as I shared earlier, that I was um, up and out of commission with my broken foot. I had looked for her on Facebook, and I didn't know there could be so many Kati Sutilas in Finland, but eventually I found Kati, and the picture was of her, and I sent her a private message. Now, she didn't answer for about five, six months, and then just two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, March 17th, I get this private message from Kati saying, I am here. And so about every other day, she and I are now messaging back and forth and she is in our lives again. And we are just earnestly praying for her to step out in faith once more. But listen to those nudges that come. They don't have to be like mine all the way to Finland. It could be as as quiet in our spirits as we're driving down the street and we go past a house of somebody that we know and we are so nudged and prompted to pray for them. Follow through on those prompts, people. Follow through because the Lord can use those. It happened to me um, the very first summer that Jim was our pastor and he was preaching from Nehemiah, Run to the Rubble, and he interviewed Terry Caldwell from church. And through that interview, I was so nudged to talk with her about was there any way that I could come alongside her in her ministry? And from that, the um, small group of women called Woman to Woman was born. And again, it was a nudging. So pay attention. Pray, Lord, as your spirit nudges us, may we sense your call in our lives. May we hear you. May we respond May we listen to your voice. People, open up and listen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Part 6. God speaks to us through pain. That's no surprise. It hit us a few years back when our son David, who lives in Cleveland with his family, was diagnosed with neck cancer. It knocked all of us off our feet and onto our knees. Of course we prayed, but the really cool thing is, so did a lot of you. We lifted it up in prayer in every place we went. People prayed earnestly for David's healing. He went through a lot of chemotherapy and more radiation. Marilyn and I moved to Cleveland Heights in their house for a while to help keep house and take care of the children in school with things like cleaning and dishes and fixing food, but Marilyn would run David to radiation every day. 
got sicker and sicker. And because he was so ill, had to be in a room all by himself. So they chose this little piano study. It's like a studio within their house. It had a door on it. So he would sit up because he couldn't lay down without being very ill. He would sit up all night and I would lay on a little futon outside that room so I could hear him. One night, um, he's been back from radiation. He was really throwing up a lot. I could hear him just retching. I was praying and praying. Finally, I decided I'd go in. And you do something at an old age that you did as a little, as a young father. You held your son's head with a cold cloth and a bucket while he heaved into it. And you think, oh, Lord, this is not something an old guy father like me should be doing with his young son. But that's how you speak to us, through pain. It got our whole family on our knees with a whole army of people like you at Christ Memorial Church to join us in prayer. You know the long and short of it now. David was healed and the cancer has not returned. Listen for the voice of Jesus when there is pain. We thank you, Lord, for pain. Not something we enjoy getting, but you do stop us in our tracks. In fact, there's a lot of pain connection with, in connection with the quarantine right now. You've got our attention. Show us, Lord, as a church, as individuals, where you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. In closing, we are the beneficiaries of prayers that our ancestors prayed for us long ago. God was already working before we arrived here on earth. And guess what? He is calling us to set up the next generation. We usually think here and now, but God thinks nations and generations. This whole coronavirus situation, we are called to pray to intercede. We have no idea how our lives are going to alter the course of history because we are praying. There's a domino effect to every prayer we pray. Are you praying? Are you listening? Lord, you have allowed us the privilege of working together, Marilyn and me, on how you talk to us, nudge us, lead us to your throne of grace through prayer. May those who are listening look at their lives and say, Father, make me receptive to how you are moving in prayer through my life. Lead me, guide me, help me to trust in you with all my heart, to not lean on my own understanding, in all my ways, acknowledge you and let you direct my paths. Thank you for this privilege and bless it what has been said and experienced to the hearts of those who hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, draw me close, closer, Lord, to you. Let the world around me fade away. Jesus, draw me close, closer, Lord, to you, that I might worship you and pray.